Hey, Sky King here, and I am going to walk you through a crash course 101, 1101, whatever college class you took of Mod Organizer 2. It's a lot easier than you think it is, and it's as easy or as difficult as you want to make it. We're not going to go dive into all the nooks and crannies and all the windows and settings. I'm literally just going to show you how to install mods, how to install Mod Organizer, sync it with your game, how to put exe files in there like SKSC and so forth and how to organize your mods. It's super easy, super quick, shouldn't take you long at all. If you have more questions, there's other videos we can go through, but for right now, this will get you started. Let's go. All right, I'm gonna run you through like kindergarten artwork version of how the game data folder works with Skyrim regularly and then with MO2. So if you're not running a mod organizer, you use Vortex or something, you install all of your mods and everything into the game's data folder. That's literally right here, the data folder. I like to keep this as clean as possible. I really only have meshes textures in there because I'm working on a mod, but I like to keep this as empty and clean as I possibly can. So how does Mod Organizer 2 differ from this? Mod Organizer creates its own data folder. Think of it as like a virtual drive and it boots the game up using its virtual data folder and it installs all of the mods there and it doesn't touch your game folder at all. Nothing is touching your game folder. In fact, even your INI files are in Mod Organizer 2. So you don't have to worry about anything with the game folder. Mod Organizer 2 will now run it for you. But you say, what if I have manually installed a mod that I'm working on and it's in my game's data folder? Well, MO2 also reads your game data folder. That's right. So it goes and pulls everything from your game's data folder when you boot up the game, puts it into the virtual drive too, pulls up all of those mods, and then launches the game. Super duper easy. Hope I explained that well. So now we're going to install Mod Organizer 2. And uh, when you double click on the exe file, you'll get this window, accept it, read all of it if you want to, hit next. We are going to install it C drive modding MO2. That sounds fine. And keep everything selected. Next, we'll have this here. I already have a version, but I'm just going to um, just call it backup. And we're going to hit next. I'm gonna hit a desktop shortcut just to make it easier to find and then install it. All right, so now it's done. We can hit finish. We have our little icon. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is when we configure it, we can create different instances. You can usually get away with just a global instance. In this case, I'm gonna do a portable instance. We're gonna select our game. So Skyrim Special Edition and Steam. And then here I'm gonna use use profile specific game INI files and profile specific save games. So, if you create different profiles within your mod organizer, you'll have independent INI files and saves. So you won't get saves from other profiles and stuff like that. And also different INI files. So if you run, <clears throat> if you run different game setups, like different grasses and stuff like that, you might want to have different INI settings. So I use profile specific for all of those. Next, location, correct. Yes, 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 and then finish. And then here, um, blah, 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 blah. we're just going to hit use old category defaults. And here is our mod organizer, all fresh and clean and ready to go. Now, as you can see, we have zero mods. I do have a couple mods over here just because they're in my data folder, my game's data folder. We already talked about that. But over here, as you can see, there's no mods except for what comes with the game here, of course what I've already put in my data folder. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just give you the layout real quick here. Um, on the left is your mod order, and then on the right will be your ESP, ESM, ESL file order, okay? You can sort them independently. I usually don't, I usually put the right in the same order as the left and vice versa, but you can do it however you want, okay? Here on the right-hand window, we have a few handy-dandy little tabs. 
you have archives, which shows you all of the BSA archives in your load order. If you wanted to take a look at those, like extract them, open them, whatever you want to do if you want to look inside them. BSAs are basically zip folders, Bethesda's version of a zip folder. Data is our virtual data folder that we talked about. So this is independent of your games data folder. Now, I say it's independent of your games data folder because it is, but it does pull in anything that is in your games data folder. For instance, I'm working on my Khajiit Camps right now. Khajiit Camps is not in my virtual data folder. It is literally in my physical Skyrim data folder, but here it is. So it's reading both the games data folder and the virtual data folder. Same thing here, if I look in textures, there's the Khajiit Tents, which does not reside in Model Organizer 2, but Model Organizer 2 will read your Skyrim data folder. Uh, as you can see here, it's pulling up the Hearthfires, Dragonborn, and Dawnguard that's in Skyrim. So just so you know how it's reading. Saves, this will be all of your game saves. You can delete them, you can do whatever you want with them. Downloads shows you anything that you've downloaded from the Nexus. Very easy. Taking a look inside the MO2 folder here, we have a couple of different things that we can look at real quick here. Mods is where your mods will be installed too. Okay, so this is basically your data folder will be the mods folder. That's your virtual data folder, shall we say. If we go back, downloads, anything you download from the Nexus will be stored here in its zip folder, because everything you download from Nexus is a zip folder, and the zip will be stored here. And once you install that zip folder, it will be sent to the mods folder. You can delete your downloads folder if you want, but if you do delete the zips from your downloads folder, if you go to reinstall a mod, you'll have to re-download it from Nexus. So it's up to you if you wanna keep them or not, I don't, but you can do whatever you want to do. Okay, so here we can go ahead and install a mod. I'll open up a, you know, I don't know, just a random mod here. Oh, look, Sky King Signs, why not? So we have two options when we download. We can download with Mod Manager or we can do a manual download. If you download with your Mod Manager and you hit Open Link, you'll see here it is now downloading with Mod Organizer. When it gets done, you can then install it directly from here. So if you double click it, you can install your mod and we're gonna hit okay. And now the mod is right here, but it's not quite installed yet. You have to click the checkbox next to it. And there you go. Now Sky King Signs is installed. If we go to data and textures, we can now see all of these sign textures and folders here. Very easy and simple to do. The second way of installing a mod is to manually download a mod or if somebody gives you a zip folder on Discord or something, you manually download. Okay, our mod is downloaded and I've dragged it here onto the desktop. I'm gonna delete our old version by right clicking it and hitting remove mod. To manually install your mod, you can simply just go to install a mod under file, go to where your zip file is stored, double click it, and then hit OK. And now the mod is installed. So that's how you would manually install a mod. Now, I have two new mods here, Unique Signs and Leaf Fall Farm. When I turned them on, you saw two ESP files get added to our plugins. Like I said, you can rearrange the mods on the left and the right hand window, depending on how you wanna set your load order up. And I guess for what mod you want to override another mod. So let's say we wanted Sky King Unique Signs to override Leaf Fall Farm for whatever reason. You would simply drag it below Leaf Fall Farm. It's the same principle over here. If we wanted Sky King Unique Signs to override Leaf Fall Farm's ESP, there's something in the ESP that we need to override, you simply drag it down and that's it. And that's how you organize your load order. Now we need to get Skyrim running. We need to set up our exe files. In the top right here, you're going to see a list of all of the programs you can run from Mod Organizer 2. You can literally plug any program into this. Uh, Cathedral Asset Optimizer is a good one to use. Uh, uh, let's see, NIFScope. 
You can do, of course, SKSE. I would suggest Creation Kit, etc. How do we set this up? You hit your little gear icon up here, and here you can modify your executables. So currently we have three. Special Edition, Special Edition Launcher, and Explore Virtual Folder. So let's say we want to add SKSE. So I'm going to hit the plus, and I'm going to hit Add from File, and I'm going to go right into my Special Edition Folder, and here is my SKSE 64 loader. I'm going to click it once and hit Open. There it is. I want it at the top of my list. So I'm going to hit this green arrow, hit Apply, and hit OK. And there is my SKSE loader. And I can simply hit Run, and Skyrim will start. So this is my full version of MO2 that I'm using. And I just wanted to run you through a couple of things real quick. One thing that I have here are these headers, I guess, or these little folders within MO2 to keep my organizer organized. So I have, for instance, a weather folder, trees, grass, and flora, city overhauls, new locations, etc. And I have these in a specific order to where I have the least amount of conflict. If you like to do this, it's very simple. All you have to do is create a new separator. So you can right click anywhere. You can like on the overwrite, for instance, all mods and create a separator above and call it whatever you want. Hair mods. And there is hair mods. You can, of course, change the color. You can do whatever you want to do with it. But that's how you do it. And when you get a mod, we'll just take a quality world map here and just drag it in there. And now you have your hair mods. Very simple to do, and it keeps everything super organized and you can find things a lot quicker. I do wanna say this, once you are done tweaking your load order, no matter how minor it is, always hit this little icon, the little blue arrow pointing down on both windows, and it will back up your load order. So if things go crazy or awry, you can hit the little yellow button and it will bring back your load order exactly how it was. Now, if you've deleted mods, it won't undelete them. You'll probably have to download them again, but nonetheless, this has saved me many times. Always remember, create a backup of your load order. Now, once you have all of your mods and everything done and they're all in order how you like them and all of your ESPs and ESMs and ESL files are in order in the way you like them and everything, you might want to tweak your INI files. It's a good idea. So, the little puzzle pieces, click it, INI editor, Skyrim INI, Skyrim prefs INI. Go through here, change whatever you want to change. The thickness of grass, how hard the wind blows, whatever. Sometimes you might have a custom bit of code you want to put in here. You can do that. If you need to find something, you can hit Control F, type in something, and there you go. There's all of your grass settings. So that is how you edit your INI files. Super duper easy. So that is how you install Mod Organizer 2, install mods, put them in a load order, run the game, mess with your INI files, and a little bit of how Mod Organizer 2 works. It's really stupid easy. If you wanna know where to start, you can check out my 40 mods or less video, which is really popular. If you just wanna get a basic load order put into your game, kind of base level stuff, and then you can kind of build your own mods on top of it. Also, if you're having problems installing SKSE, I have a video on how to install SKSE with Mod Organizer 2. Check it out. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something. I will see you all in Tamriel or something. I don't know.